So is buying an older Mac in 2023 a good idea? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So I get this question a lot, and that's why I wanted to cover this topic. A lot of people always ask me, should I buy this old Mac on eBay? Should I get this old refurbished Mac? Is it a good idea? Is it a good value in 2023? And that's what we're going to talk about. But stay tuned for the entire video because I'm going to even show you some models you might want to consider that are older, some that you may not. But I want to kind of get into the, you know, the whole overall gist of this and just talk about is it a good idea right now to buy these older Macs. Now, first of all, let me explain who I am, all right? I'm a little different than the normal user. So if you've watched my channel, I've done tons of videos on old Macs. I did a 2013 iMac. I maybe put it up here, got it for under 200 bucks. Great system. And I did 2014 MacBook Air. So I have a lot of videos come out that actually are on older systems. So that's who I am. And I'm a little different than most people. Let's just kind of set the stage there. And also, I guess, I mean, it's just important to kind of cover that, right? And I even, sitting right back there, I have it back there just for aesthetic reasons. That's a 2011 iMac, right? 2011 27-inch iMac sitting back there. I boot off an external SSD drive on there, and the thing works as if it's basically a brand new computer. Obviously, we have issues with the OS and things like like that which we'll get into overall though that system back there can do 4k you know youtube videos as far as watching them not editing them but watching them and uh, it can do obviously very very you know anything that you can do nowadays on a normal computer that thing back there can do it's pretty amazing for a 2011 i mean what are we talking third what is it 12 12 years later 12 13 years later pretty crazy right but should you actually get this all right number one things are actually different right now all right We've never had this kind of computer. It's an M2 Mac Mini for $599. You can actually get it $499 if you're a student. We've never had a system that good for that cheap, all right? Including an M2 chip, which is pretty crazy, right? This M1 MacBook Air is sitting right here. This system right here is $799 right now. You can sometimes see it for $750, brand new. I've seen it for that a couple times. This system, if it came out in 2023 as a brand new you know, laptop and we didn't even have the prior versions, this would probably still win awards right now. It's that good, and that's $799. So now we're talking $499 to $799. You can get yourself into an M1, M2, you know, Mac, and that, just for the sense of the word, that's actually gonna do everything that the modern ones can do and more. All right, so first of all, the honest answer, and then I'm gonna get into why you'd wanna buy these used ones, all right? So the honest answer is probably not, all right? You probably shouldn't be buying these right now, the older ones. These you should, not the older ones sitting back there, or obviously some other ones that I'll show you in a second. The, the, in the reality of the system, you know, let's just talk about the reality, right? If you're gonna be doing this for your main computer and it's gonna be for paying bills or doing your taxes or doing very important tasks like going onto your online banking and you only have a few hundred bucks to spend, you probably should be picking up that M2 Mac Mini. You probably have that external monitor sitting around. I'm guessing everybody in the world has a 1080p monitor by now sitting somewhere in their house in the basement or something. Just hook it up to that and use that. Or you should be buying this laptop over here. Maybe even you can get these used sometimes for 500 bucks or so. And, uh, and then you're gonna be, you know, obviously some of these cheap ones back here in the 2013s and even 2015s and what have you, they're still gonna be, you know, you're still be maybe only spending a couple hundred bucks more or not even. So that's what you really honestly should do because if it's something that you're gonna be using for your main computer and you're not the most security sensitive person out there, um, you really wanna consider the newer models here for sure. All right, so basically also the performance gap, right? The performance gap between like the 2015s and 2018 Macs when you were back in the day when you wanted to buy older Macs, they weren't that far apart. Now the performance gaps are huge between the M, you know, M1, M2 series and some of those old Intel chips. So that's also another reason. I mean, the performance gap got a lot wider as far as what it can do and uh, you know, as far as the modern apps it's running and stuff. And even the way it uses eight gigs of RAM, it uses it differently and it's actually more efficient. So getting these new systems is gonna make a big difference. All right, and another reason is the internet's the wild, wild west right now, all right? So if you're not that sensitive as far as security and what have you, you wanna get on the newest OS, and that's gonna be one of the problems with those Macs sitting back there. Now, we'll get into why you might wanna buy those in a second, but overall, since it's the wild, wild west, and you're doing your important stuff like taxes, banking information, anything like that, you wanna be in the newest, you know, newest OS, let's just be honest. Now keep in mind, maybe not the exact newest, wait a month or two after it comes out to get all the bugs out and everything, but always upgrade to the newest one just so you have you know, basic security features and all that. I'm different, I run a channel, I do tests on older Macs and I do tests on older OSs, but if you're running you know, your basic tasks of everyday life, including all your financial stuff, you probably shouldn't be. I mean, let's just be honest, like basically in 2015, let's say when we were buying these old Macs, 2018, I mean, even five years ago, 
we weren't doing all these life-changing tasks online. I mean, you didn't go online just to, for everything medical. You know, you figure out all your graphs and everything. You go to the doctor. They don't even talk to you anymore. You have to sign up through the internet. You have to do this through the internet. You have to pay your bills, your taxes. You have to do everything on the internet. Even five, six years ago, that wasn't the case. I mean, 10 years ago, for sure, none of this was the case. So all that's changed, and that means that the security on your OS is even more important now. Now, just don't get me wrong on this either. I mean, obviously, if you get a phishing scam where someone sends you an email from your bank that's not really your bank, you can be just as fooled on that system back there as you can on this system right here or this system right here, um, the M1 you know, iMac. So even, this, even though these are running Ventura, that's not going to you know, thwart those type of attacks in most cases. You know, so obviously, back there, you can pick those up. You're still going to have a problem with that, but you're also not going to be, you know, you're not going to be saved by these new systems. So you still have to use what's up here and always kind of do your due diligence and kind of have that feeling when you know something's off. All right, so with all that said, do I recommend any older Macs right now? And the question is yes, for the right person and for the right model, right? Let's start with the models. So absolutely the 2020 27-inch iMac. 2020 27-inch iMac 5K, totally recommend it. In fact, Max Tech, if I'll show his video just the, the, you know, the top of his video right here so you guys can take a look and maybe watch that. He's claiming you can get this thing for $500. Now, I haven't seen it for that cheap. I've seen it for maybe $700, maybe $500 if it's got a cracked screen and stuff. Overall, though, if you can get this thing for $500, pick it up. I, use, I do all my editing over there, not this one, over there on a 2017 iMac that's a lot slower than the 2020, and it, and it crunches through 504K videos, no problem. You can add RAM to it very inexpensively, 32 gigs for like 60 bucks or something, you can go way up from there. So there's a lot of advantages to that system, and it's running the, the brand new OS, right? And that's what I wanna talk about. So a lot of these systems, if we look over here at my screen, I'll put this a link in this to my description, but if you go to this, it's the Mac OS compatibility guide. I've showed this many times on my channel, but if you go over here, you can see, um, you know, you pick the model that you want. You can see how much the OS can be upgraded to, right? So some of these old systems can be upgraded to Ventura for sure. So if you look over here and we go down to, let's just pick this iMac and iMac Pro, expand it. I'll show you right here. If I scroll all the way down, here's Ventura over here. You scroll all the way down. You can see, yes, yes, all the way up to 2017. So you can still buy iMacs from 2017 that are supported with Ventura, which is the newest OS. Now keep in mind that those that, that support is gonna go away soon, but the 2020's probably got three, four more years left. So if you buy that right now and it's $500, that comes with a screen that's 5K, you're just gonna be spending 15, 1600 bucks on the exact same screen with the Mac, the studio display. It's almost the exact same thing. And you're getting it for 500 with the computer in it. Use it for four years until the OS is kind of, you know, getting to the end of it shaky there. And then you basically just sell it to somebody that knows what they're doing with security later. They'll buy it for a couple hundred bucks and it's cost you almost nothing. So I recommend that one hands down. Now you also have to know which ones you're buying, all right? So if you're gonna be buying something like a 2000, let's say 18 or 17 MacBook Pro, um, and you understand the keyboard could have an issue on it and it's not under warranty, you may wanna stay away from those models. So there's certain models that are better than others, like iMacs and stuff like that, that usually don't have the same issues. Back in the day, that 2017 iMac, or 2011 iMac sitting behind me, that huge 27 inch behemoth, that thing always had a video card problem. So you pick those up for a couple hundred bucks, the thing might just you know, go, go crazy on you and the, the video card may break the next day. Day. You just don't know. So you got to know these things. I mean, obviously, you can get incredible prices on a 2017 MacBook. I mean, even if the OS is still supported on that, you got to wonder about the keyboard then. And also, you know, if that breaks, what are you going to be spending to fix it? It's going to be hundreds of dollars on that thing. And you got to understand that. So you got to go in knowing that. All right, so the other thing is, is if you're kind of like me and you're a hobbyist or you're somebody that knows a lot about security. Now, I'm not saying I'm a security expert. I worked in a data center for 25 years and I don't even know this, you know, I'm not barely scratching the surface. But there's things you can do that can make your security better. So even if you're running an older OS, all right, let's take a look at some of these systems first of all. If you go online, I always recommend this site, but I'm not affiliated with them. I sell iMac. It's basically an eBay store. They sell hundreds of used systems. I'm just showing you on my screen here. Hundreds of them pages. They change out all the time and you know, maybe not hundreds at the same time, but each week they have different ones coming up. If you go over here, you can see something like this. This is a 2015 right here. Let's click off this stuff. 2015 MacBook Air, um, 256 gig hard drive, just like you get now on these systems. Eight gigs of RAM, SSD, you know, this is a grade D, but I've seen these for, I got a grade A for under 200 bucks, all right? So for under 200 bucks, you can pick up a system that's gonna work as a burner laptop. I have one sitting over there and it works great. Now, if you're a hobbyist, you know, you know that that OS can't be updated, so you can do things. Now, let's just say you wanted to travel and you wanna to go to a hotel. Well, that's dangerous at a hotel, right? 
definitely connect through a VPN. That'll help you. So if you know how to connect through a VPN, if you also know that you're only going to watch YouTube videos on that thing, and just do very, very, very basic stuff, all right? Um, don't do your taxes on it. Don't ever connect to your bank through that system. Do things like that, then these systems are fine. I mean, if you're a hobbyist again and you like dealing with the older systems, that's fine. There's other systems in here as well. Take a look at this. This is gonna be 490 bucks. It's, you know, this is getting up there as far as the cost, but I can guarantee this is a 2017, so it's still supported the OS. It's got 256 SSD. This ad keeps coming up. And then basically it's got, it says it's, this is a grade A, so it's perfect condition, all right? So 490. Now I can tell you a couple things. This one here, um, well, let me see, it does have the SSD, so it's gonna be very, very snappy and very quick. It's not gonna, you're not gonna have any problems with it at all. So overall, that's not a bad price. In fact, if you were to go try to find a Windows laptop right now for that exact same cost, that's an all-in-one system with the exact same screen as far as the quality of that and what have you, you're not gonna find it, right? It's gonna be at least comparable or, or worse. So this might be a good system for somebody doing that, but again, in a couple years, maybe a year or two from now, that OS is gonna lose its compatibility with the newest OS, and then you're gonna be looking around. So you need to know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, and you're the kind of person that does not care about security at all, you shouldn't be buying these older systems. All right, so to wrap this up, should you be buying these older systems in 2023? And the answer is yes and no, right? No and yes, whatever you wanna say. No if you're just this person that uses their computer for all your important stuff, and you have no idea how to protect yourself as far as security. You don't want to install any extra security to you know, monitor things, including you know, VPNs or McAfee virus protection, whatever. You just don't want to do that. Then you buy the basic newest Macs, you pay the extra couple hundred bucks, and you're protected for the best you can, all right? That's all you can do. But if you're somebody that likes to be a hobbyist, you like to buy the older systems, you like to find deals on stuff, you like, you know, you even like to just buy new stuff that's not new but cheaper, and then you sell it, you buy it, because you get that kind of fix from it. That's fine and dandy. People do that all the time with electronics. Then maybe that's right for you too. Overall, what I wanted to say in the video is it's a yes and a no, and you need to know what you're doing if you're going to get into the older stuff, and uh, it's not worth it to save the extra couple hundred bucks because at the end of the day, things will break on them. You have no warranty on them. You know, the keyboards on the MacBooks are, you know, a lot of times terrible through certain ranges. Other things like Wi Fi can be worse. You know, you just have to know what you're doing and feel out the situation. But I say, at the end of the day, you only live once, and if you want to pick up an old one, get one. I'll still do it on this channel, and I'll still have old videos like this, and that's just the way I am. But ask yourself the question, are you like that? And if you're not, then don't pick one up and get the M2 Mac Mini or even the M1 MacBook Air. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.